I'm telling you guys, we leave the Bible out of it. We have no ground to stand on. I'll tell you what the Bible is. It's not just print on parchment. It's Jesus. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what it says. John 1, 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Guys, we've got to get back into the Word of God and let the Word of God get back into us. It's the only book on the planet that guarantees you success if you'll memorize it. Joshua 1, 8, it says, The words of this book shall not depart from your eyes. You shall meditate upon them day and night, and it will guarantee you overwhelming success. You might say, well, Bobby, I'm so busy. I don't have time. Oh, listen, take time. Mm. Take time to feed upon the Word of God. Feed your soul. Strengthen your soul with the Word of God. Oh, it'll help you. It really will. I'm, I want you to know that. I got uh, five grandchildren, and when our two oldest was just little bitty Schaefer's, little bitty blonde-headed uh, redneck boys down there in Texas, and <laughs> the Lord said, Bobby, I want you to teach your grandchildren the Word of God. Mm. I said, oh, that's a noble thing. I want to. I said, what verse do you want me to teach them? He He said, I want you to teach your two grandsons. I want you to teach them Psalms 119, verse 9 through 11. Now, when I memorize the Bible, I memorize it through the King James. That's not the smartest thing to do. But here's the King James, Psalms 119, verse 9 through 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought after thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Now, let me ask you a question. You think two little rednecks are going to memorize that? (laughs) Answer is no. So, listen, I could call them anywhere right now. I could call them right now and say to them, hey, how can a young person live a clean life? They'll say by obeying the Bible. See, they, it's in a same message, but in a vernacular they can receive. That's why you need to study the Bible in many different translations so you can siphon and suck out all the nectar of God. Mm-hmm. Talking about ciphering, uh, siphoning, here's your verse if you want it. You want it? Yes. Deuteronomy 32:13. Deuteronomy 32, 13 says, God caused him, Israel, to siphon honey from the rock. What in the world does that mean? Siphon. That means you have to put out a little effort to get the flow. So, you know, tell him what will happen if you'll put out a little effort leaning into God. He caused him to siphon honey from the rock. You're going to find that honey talks about the deepest nectar of the things of God. You're going to find out some of the hardest situations you face will produce the sweetest nectar of God Mm -hmm. if you'll lean into it. You believe that? Listen, I really meant what I was saying about the best days are to come. And I want to kid, if it, he has not asked me one thing about promoting this, but you need to seriously consider buying one of these houses they're talking about. In the Bible, it, people ask me all the time, Bobby, what do you think about the economy? What should I do with the money I have? You know, should I invest in gold, silver, da, 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 da? Because listen, paper could be worthless. And here's what I tell people. The Bible says, for those that are asking what to do, it says buy land, plant crops, and build houses. Mm. So uh, uh, instead of having your money in a, in a bank box somewhere, you ought to consider building one of these houses. You say, well, I'm pretty comfortable where I am. Build it for somebody else. I'm telling you guys, this is something. We're going to have to have these cities of refugees. Yeah. We really are. Yeah. We really are. And, and I'm glad you're building the guardhouse up there. The world is getting darker, but God's the same. Yeah. We got to run into God. Yeah. He's, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they're safe. We need to know more about the promises of God. And you find out the, about the promises of God in the names of God. Don't you believe it? Yes. I like it. I like the word Jehovah Shamoth, the God that's here and there. Aren't you glad? Yes. You're not going to run to some region. He's not there. He's everywhere. <laughs> he's God, he's God that's here and he's God that's there. And so he's got at least nine covenant reverential names and we need to know them, don't we? Yes, we the do. name of the Lord is we a strong need a tower. Study. We need to do a study on that on this show yeah. one day. Mm-hmm. Really, just all he's, the names of God yeah. and what they mean. Yeah, He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals us. He's Jehovah Shalom, the God that brings us peace. Oh, the world is looking for peace. Yes. You can't get it in appeal. Here's what God told me He said, Tell the people, you cannot medicate anxiety, you have to repent of it. Mm. That's what He said. Mm. You can't medicate anxiety, you have to repent of it. That's in the Bible. It's. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Be anxious for nothing. So if we're anxious, we're doing something God says not to do. He that knows to do good and does it not to him, it's sin. So you can't medicate sin. You have to repent of it. You say, well, Bobby, uh, you know, I've got all these emotions. Uh, <laughs> Psalms 55, 22. Casting all of your care upon him because he certainly cares for you. And the word casting there, it's mm-hmm. a word for hammock. Like a uh, hammock? Yes. Really? Yeah, yeah, just run and fall into it. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not sure it'll hold me. Yes, it will. <laughs> the everlasting arms of God.